What's going on everybody? Welcome to E3 Rehab. Today we're going to discuss osteoporosis and exercise strategies to help deal with this issue. Let's get into it. According to the Clinician's Guide to Prevention and Treatment of Osteoporosis by Cosman and colleagues in 2014, osteoporosis is characterized by low bone mass, deterioration of bone tissue and disruption of bone architecture, compromised bone strength, and an increase in the risk of fracture. Around 10 million Americans have osteoporosis, over 40 million have low bone density, and it has been suggested that the lifetime risk of fracture for women and men over the age of 50 is 1 in 3 and 1 in 5 respectively. That's pretty high, and these associated fractures come with a lot of unfortunate complications. This primarily affects that baby boomer demographic, which makes up about 20% of the U.S. population. Now, most of you watching are probably between the ages of 25 and 34, but this might apply to your parents, your family members, or your close friends. And Benjamin Franklin's quote applies here perfectly. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure because we see that peak bone mass is usually achieved between the ages of 18 and 25 and can be influenced by factors like nutrition and physical activity. That's where today's article comes into play. We're looking at a paper published this year in the Journal of Bone titled, Regional Changes in Indices of Bone Strength of Upper and Lower Limbs in Response to High Intensity Impact Loading or High Intensity Resistance Training by Lambert et al. This article was reviewed in this month's issue of Mass or Monthly Applications in Strength Sport by Greg Knuckles, which we are an affiliate of and it's a monthly research review breaking down all things related to training and nutrition. In the study, young adult females who are categorized as physically inactive and demonstrating below average bone mass, but otherwise healthy, were split into two different groups over the course of 10 months. One group participated in a high intensity progressive impact training program led by an instructor twice per week for 40 to 45 minutes per session. Sessions consisted of punching, so jabs, crosses, and hooks, and lower limb landing exercises such as jumping, hopping, and drop jumps. These movements were progressed over the course of the research study, including going from gloves to hand wraps, as well as progressing from wearing shoes to being barefoot. On the other hand, the other group participated in a high-intensity progressive resistance program led by an instructor twice per week for 40 to 45 minutes per session. These sessions consisted of deadlifts, squats, calf raises, overhead presses, bent over rows, and bench press. Weights were progressed for all movements so that participants were at least completing five sets of three to five repetitions at 85% of their one rep max, except for the calf raise, which was completed for five sets of 10 repetitions. Without going into too much detail, they did find that both groups benefited from their respective training. So either the impact training or the resistance training, However, the adaptations seen were slightly different between the groups. So for the impact training group, bony responses were seen at the distal aspect of long bones, so the tibia and the radius, whereas for the resistance training, they saw greater bony adaptations in the shaft of long bones and at the proximal femurs. At E3 Rehab, we think this is super important because it goes back to that Benjamin Franklin quote. It gives us an idea on how to prevent osteoporosis or at least mitigate osteoporosis and some of its negative consequences on health-related outcomes or quality of life by implementing something like resistance training and impact training early in life and then keeping consistent with that training throughout the lifespan. A quick caveat, these were young, healthy females, and from what I can tell, were not classified as having osteopenia or osteoporosis, so we can't necessarily generalize these results to everybody. However, we have seen that this type of training can be efficacious and safe in older male and females who do present with osteopenia or osteoporosis. I'll link those studies in the description as well as the rest, and if there's enough interest, it could be a topic for a future discussion. If you want to learn more about this article in depth, I do recommend checking out Mass. As I said, we are an affiliate, but they are a great resource that we use personally, and by supporting them, you help support us so we can put out more YouTube videos like this. And of course, a disclaimer, this is not medical advice. If you want to start up a new exercise program, especially as it relates to your bone density, make sure you consult your doctor or other healthcare professional. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, 
and subscribe. We put out weekly YouTube videos. You can also head over to our website at e3rehab.com where we have weekly blogs, monthly podcasts, and rehab programs. Also, let us know what you think of the content. Leave a comment below and we'll see you next time. Peace.